All right, at this point, we have a system set up where we have an ambient sound with some wind and some spooky sounds coming from this ambient sound actor. And then here in the back room, we have two ambient sound simples that are creating some nice sound effects for our generators. However, there's a wall dividing the two, and it would be nice if we could set up a system where you couldn't really hear the generators very well while you're out here, but then once you're in here, you can't really hear the wind very well either. Like, this room has some soundproofing. Now, there's other applications for the example that I'm describing. Let's say you're walking down the street, and you can hear the cars and the pedestrians. There's all the, the standard sounds of a street. But then you want to step into a restaurant. So you step into the restaurant, and the doors close behind you, and it shuts off the sound of the street, at least for the most part. Maybe you can still hear the occasional horn honk or somebody who shouts real loud. But then really, most of what you hear now is the sound of a restaurant. People maybe conversing or the scrape of uh, you know cutlery on dishes, that sort of thing. Doing this with these radius-based actors can be a little bit difficult. Now, to kind of show you an example of why, let me switch over to a top view. If we wanted to restrict the playback of our generator so that it was really only clearly heard here inside this room, we'd have to be very careful with our radii so that only the edges of the outer radius kind of bled out into the first room and it would require us to take our ambient sound actors and possibly have a lot of different copies of it just to make sure we filled every nook and cranny it's kind of tricky now there is an easier way uh, there's a special type of volume called a reverb volume which among other things allows you to do reverberation so if you wanted to do echoes you could and there are several different echo settings that you can play with but more importantly, it allows you to establish ambient zones in your level so that sound effects can be controlled and contained within a specific volume. We could, if we wanted to, completely switch off the sounds of the generators when we leave the back room, and we wouldn't have to touch the radii of these actors at all. It's a very, very cool system. I will give you this one word of warning. As you set up an ambient zone or a reverb volume, every time you change a property, you have to rebuild your geometry because it uses that geometry build as a way to calculate which sound actors are inside the volume and which ones are outside of it. So what I'm going to be doing is just setting this up once and then we'll pause while I do a full rebuild and then we'll come back and show it. I'm not going to be doing a lot of setting tweaks back and forth, though it's very easy and fun to play with if you'd like to experiment on your own. So how do you create a reverb volume? Well, you create one the way you create any other volume. First off, we need the Red Builder brush. So let's come over here. I think I've got it in the side view. And because the last thing I did was create the, um, the post-process volume for this back room, it's already exactly the size that it needs to be, which is pretty convenient. So I'm going to slide this up into the level. And just, you know, just to be picky, I'm going to make sure that this volume is just a little bit offset from the post-process volume for no other reason than it'll make it easier for me to select. So they're just like one little grid space offset from one another. Now, with my Red Builder brush in position, we're going to right-click and come down to Reverb Volume. Now we can move the Red Builder brush out of the way at this point. It's gone. And the reverb volume is this great big yellow volume you see here, not to be confused with the great big yellow light mass importance volume. They just happen to have the same coloration. If we hit F4 and take a look at its properties, we have settings and we have ambient zone settings. So if we take a look at the settings, these are basic reverberation settings. Do you want to hear reverb? If so, what kind? And there are several different settings. There's cave, hallway, stone corridor, the kind of stuff that, you, that uh, I've been used to seeing like in the effects section of my sound card for a while. But pretty cool to play with. You can also change the volume of your reverberation and the fade time for how quickly it'll fade out. Now, down from here, we have our ambient zone settings. If you check the inside checkbox, you've now established that this volume defines an ambient zone. So until you switch that checkbox, you don't have an ambient zone. Now you have two sets of properties. You have interior properties and exterior properties. Within each, you have volume, time, LPF, and LPF time. Now let's take a quick look at what these do. First off, each one of these two sets of properties 
you can think of as controlling what's going on on the opposite side of the wall. For instance, exterior volume controls how sounds outside the room are going to sound while you're inside the room. Interior volume controls how sounds will sound that are inside the room while you are outside the room. So these properties always control what's taking place on the other side of the wall. And it makes sense, because while you're inside the same volume as your sound, you don't want to affect the sound. You want it to come in at full volume and be there and ready to listen to. So what I'm going to do is take both our interior and exterior volume and pull them way down. We're going to pull them down to, let's say, 0.25. Now, we also have interior and exterior time. This is how long the volume shift will take place. So you don't actually get a pop from high volume to low volume. In this case, by default, it's switching over half a second, which will probably work just fine. But just for the fun of it, let's set these to about one second, just to say we changed it. Now, we can also apply a low-pass filter. Low-pass filter will tend to make sounds sound muffled, so let's crank this up as well. We're going to take the exterior low pass filter and we'll set that to about 0.8 because really that's only going to be affecting the wind sound. So we're not going to affect that too much. But the interior low pass filter will be affecting how the generator sound while we're outside the generator room. So let's really crank these down. Let's say 0.2. You also have a LPF uh, low pass filter time as well so you can you can control how quickly that low pass filter changes so we're gonna leave that at a second to match our overall volume so now we've got all these things set up however we won't be able to notice a difference until we do a rebuild because it is at rebuild time that the volume calculates which actors are inside the space of the volume and which actors are without so that it can apply the appropriate adjustments to volume and low pass filtering so what I'm gonna do is Pause the video. You'll notice just kind of a little bit of a flicker. And when we come back, everything will be rebuilt and we can test this out. Okay, so everything is now rebuilt. Let's go ahead and test out our level. So you can hear the sound. And you can hear those spooky sounds kind of coming through. If you listen, we've now added the sound of those engines kind of coming through the wall. It's really faint, but listen to what happens when we go into the next room. So now they're really loud. It does sound a lot like a train, doesn't it? And you can still make out the ambient sounds coming from the other side of the room. When we leave, though, they get quiet once again. So we've given the illusion that the player's kind of moving through a mostly soundproof room. That is essentially how ambient zones work. Make use of them. They will make your sound setups a lot easier. That's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.